I got a ride or die So guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you are doing well, hope you have enjoyed your Christmas. I know full well I have, I have eaten so much, I genuinely wanna get back on the diet like right now. I started drinking shakes this morning. So yeah, we're back on it. Anyway, we'll see past the weight gain over Christmas, it's all good. I put uh, this picture, as you can see, right there out on Instagram and on Facebook, and I wanted to sit down and just do a Q&A with you guys. I know these videos never do very well, and I get it, but leave me on in the background, because I want to treat this sort of like a podcast style video, so I can chat to you guys, because I don't chat to you enough at the end of the day. I do on social media, so if you want to chat to me at any point, DM, comments, Jamie FYD, give me a follow. So, we're gonna start going through the questions. Um, I'm going to try and answer them as well as I can and I'm going to try and shout you guys out at the same time. I'm going to say sorry for mispronouncing anybody's name or anybody's uh, username because yeah some of them are just like what? So we will start with Instagram. Instagram, uh, I'm on there quite a lot, so again, if you wanna go and follow me, jmfwd, on Instagram. I'm usually in the comment section or in the DMs over there. So, underscore Riot G asks, any plans to go back to your car review style of a few years back with a walk round? Now, I believe car reviews have changed or car based content has really changed in the last uh, few years. Living life fast, officially gassed, you know, all the bigger guys, I would say, have really gone in with the excitement at the start. And I used to start videos where I would, uh, go for a drive in the car, then do a walk around and go for a drive in the car. <laughs> Sorry about that, my set just fought, fell apart. <laughs> so recently what I've tried to do in the last couple of years is actually uh, take the excitement, put it at the start and sort of get engaging with the uh, audience. I do feel that I want to sort of go back to walk rounds and more casual um, stuff sometimes it's really down to time with the car I do have a lot of scenarios at the moment with COVID and everything that's going on I only have the car for about an hour um, so sometimes that means I can't find a place to stop it's raining or whatever's going on and I still need the content I still want to get the footage of the car I still want to drive it so sometimes it's an in and out process and that's sort of how it is sometimes um, as a creator when I do travel I'm very time restrained so sometimes I really have to just get in and get out uh, which is a shame because I don't get to enjoy cars as much, but hopefully, you know, 2021 when all this sort of stuff is over, COVID is over, we can start doing um, a little bit more relaxed vlogging with cars. That's what I'd really like to do. I'd like to sort of ditch the GoPros and just go and have a laugh with the owners in the cars. That's really what I want to get into. Um, but obviously, COVID and stuff, I can't even be in the same car as most people. So, um, yeah, bit annoying, but I would like to go back to doing stuff like that or more vloggy stuff because it's just nice. Um, Matt underscore Hutton one asks what does the Cadillac need to be running and driving and back on the road so the engine was pulled out four years ago was put back in last year hasn't been run since it's all the auxiliary belts everything it isn't even connected whatsoever um, the gearbox and everything is still in there it's still connected and all that so it's still you know you can roll through the gears put it in park and stuff but the engine itself isn't physically connected whatsoever. So the plan is in sort of mid January, I think. I've, I've tried to get it booked in, but obviously people are on break and stuff. Um, I'm going to just send it to a shop. Uh, I know the shop I'm gonna use, and we're just gonna delve right into it with a professional. I'm not doing it on my own because I think um, this car needs to be right. It's not just for content, it's for myself. I, I literally am in love with this car. So I wanna get a professional in um, to diagnose how the engine's been rebuilt, uh, if it's been done right, and just check everything before we start building that engine back up and get it running. So hopefully that is content that's coming very, very soon. Che2111, US, shout out. Uh, what's the biggest highlight of your life channel so far? I'd say, uh, personally, get engaged to my lovely girlfriend, shout out. I would say, Oh, for the channel, it's, it's just driving all the cars and being able to do it for a living, I think more than anything, um, and having people engage. 
that's the biggest thing. You guys actually watch what I do and the content and stuff and you want to be a part of it. So that's what I appreciate more than anything. That's the biggest achievement is people actually care. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's the way I see it. Luke underscore Hunt underscore Builder. Shout out, will you buy a Mark II Focus RS for the channel? No. Um, so before the RS3, I did look at buying an RS, uh, Focus RS. Um, I drove home car companies, fantastic car. Didn't want to sell it at the time. Now they've sold it obviously like two years later. But I don't feel like I want to get back into a car like that because I have the Series 1. I don't necessarily need for myself personally another Ford product hot hatch two door on the driveway. I am very content with the Series 1, which is here. Um, so I don't think I need to go and buy another Ford product because, in all fairness, if you really know me, it's like American, Japan, German, Ford. That's sort of the ranking um, from me personally and how I actually like cars. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't probably necessarily go for one. What was your first car? Asks uh, David Bosworth 8. It was a Vauxhall Corsa C. I put it on Air Ride, I put a roof box on it. Euro was massive at the time, it's like 13 years ago now. Was an absolute weapon. That Burgundy Sierra on Instagram, shout out. If there was any other old Ford you would own, what would it be? Now I'm gonna ruffle some feathers. I really am. I would happily sell the Series 1 for a three door Sierra Cosworth. Not an RS500 though, because they're loads of money. But I would happily give that car up to get into that. And I think that's the only way I could probably go with that car. Not that it's for sale. I haven't got a sale date whatsoever. So before everyone goes, oh my God, just selling all your cars. I knew you were going to keep them for two months. Ugh. At the end of the day, if someone come up to me with a sum of money for that car that I could put towards a three door Sierra, I'm going to do it. Or if someone with a three door Sierra came to me and said, hello mate, give me that car plus this, and I could achieve that, I would probably go for it straight away. Right, but that's the only other one I would go with. I'm just gonna say that now. That's the only other Ford product that I would probably replace that car with. I don't even want to replace it with anything else. Off Ford, 742 on Instagram, shout out. Could you ever see yourself owning a Mark I or a Mark II Escort in the near future? Um, yeah, as I've just said, I like the idea of a Mark I, but I don't lust for it. Um, I lusted after an RS Turbo and a Sierra Cosworth. I like the Escort stuff, but I wouldn't own one. For no reason, other than I would just go and literally buy something else. Um, that polished Beamer, shout out. What's your ultimate goal in terms of FYD brand? And what are you going to, and where do you see it in the next five to 10 years? Um, so the brand itself, I want to, next year especially, just go back to the roots of what I do. Um, we're gonna bring back loads of OG uh, cuts and styles and prints um, because I, I love what I used to do and it is still a limited run clothing brand and there is never loads of stuff on the shelves and I quite like that. Um, I like the exclusivity in a certain way, but there's so much that I have done in the past that people don't even know about that I would like to bring back from a personal um, point of view and for you guys, you know, enjoying it as well. So yeah, that's the plan. And with the five to 10 year goal, um, I just want it to be what it is now, but maybe a little bit bigger, uh, maybe have a designer uh, in-house and a packer in-house and, you know, just, bring it up a notch um but i don't want to ever get it out of control i love doing stuff myself that's why it's still just me doing it um i don't ever want to get to a like a corporate point where we're just trying to chuck loads of t-shirts out the door it's not really how it works for me um it, it means the world to me to do it for a living so if i can sustain myself just doing it rather than bringing other people in that is the plan but i always want stuff to grow you'd be silly if you didn't thumper 6IXX, what car would you flat out refuse to review and what other cars on your channel are your ownership bucket list? Um, I don't think I'd ever re refuse to review a car. I would refuse to review a dangerous car if I found out something was wrong, really, really wrong with it. Because I do check cars before we get in them and stuff because you know you have to. Um, but yeah, I don't think I've ever, I, I'm not the person to say, oh no, it's not good enough or anything. I want to literally drive everything under the sun and I think I pretty much have, which is cool. There's always stuff that I get offered. I think, oh bloody hell, I didn't even think about uh, reviewing one of them. So I've never, I never turn my nose up of uh, driving anything because um, I always want the experience from something. There's got to be a reason why someone buy something, three wheelers, every, like we've done everything on this channel and um, I just want to experience everything. Because then for me, 
going into the next question, bucket list, I can then choose what cars really mean the world to me and what ones I want in my garage. And that's sort of how I've got to the stage that I'm at now where I own the Cadillac, Series 1 and a 106 GTI and an Audi. So there's a big variety there. You sort of have something from everything. Because I've driven so much, I know for well those, those are the cars in those different sectors that I would own, if that makes sense. Um, Will.sell. What is your biggest regret of a car? Um, sale was the Cadillac, but bought it back, so it's, it's still a regret, but you know, the time spent wasn't there. Um, other than that, I've bought cars in the past, like I bought um, an E300 diesel Mercedes, thinking it was a Lexus GS300, it definitely wasn't. Um, it was a really old, I'm gonna say it's a V-Reg maybe, or P no, it might be an R. It was an old diesel one, and it just what the quality was terrible. The dash was horrible, and you you pitch it next to a Lexus, mate. I tell you, nothing for the same price point gets anywhere close. So yeah, that was probably the regret, mainly because I was buying it because I thought it was going to be like a certain car when it wasn't, and I sold it. I was just like, I'm buying another Lexus. <laughs> Cody underscore Breger four. Sorry for destroying people's names. What are your thoughts on Peugeot 106s as a first car? I believe that the insurance would be quite expensive on them, so please check that. I always say to people, check the insurance before you do anything, um, especially if you're young. Um, you know, as you're older, I'm 31 now, so I can sort of get away with pretty much insuring anything and it not being silly money. Um, but yeah, if you, you do an insurance quite first. Fantastic cars, don't wrap it around a tree, it will hurt. Um, let's have a look. Baz Brooks Banks, any more mods planned for the Series 1? Um, not necessarily, I didn't really buy it to modify it. I just wanted to uh, do loads of paintwork on it, that'll be coming next year, and just enjoy it. I want to recondition a few bits underneath, recondition the engine bay a little bit. Um, other than that, just drive it and enjoy it more than anything. Um, I, I really bought that because I just really wanted one and I didn't really want to change that one because I love the way it looks. Um, people always say when you're going to put like standard wheels on it, which I actually have standard wheels like right there for it. I haven't like gone to town and refurbished them and that because I genuinely don't think it wants it, it wants it. I don't think I want to want to change it at all. I did actually have a fallen out of someone on Facebook about that the other day. He could not believe that that my series one had those wheels on it, and I said, "Well, just when I've got some standard ones, he's like, you should put the standard ones back on." I was like, "No, I like the wheels that are on it now." He's like, "No," and I was like, "Yep." Yeah. <laughs> just full stop so yeah um again not i haven't bought that to please people i bought it to please myself and you know it's an achievement for me personally so yeah modifications wise i don't think i really want it i don't want to go any more power i think it's like 150 odd horsepower we might put it on rollers next year something like that covid dependent um but we'll see you never know but i won't be engine swapping or anything silly i want that to be a solid car forever i just want it to be a mint version of itself um, lastly for here, um, Nathan Cantel, when you K20 turboing it, I'm assuming you mean the Series 1, where it is there, that's not happening unfortunately. That, that would be sick in another car, but not in a Series 1 unfortunately. Right, on to Instagram stories, where I put this picture up. And we are going to go through what you guys' responses are. There is quite a few, so I want to try and get through these as quickly as possible. First off, Luke Walker, what's your favourite moment of 2020? I would say buying back the Cadillac, driving many, many cars, uh, mostly the classic stuff, um, and just being able to actually do this for a living still, um, even though COVID is going on, it is uh, still viable for me to be doing this, which is fantastic. MLD.media, who would you collaborate with in 2021? Um, I would quite happily collaborate with anybody, but I've done it in the past where I've gone out of my way to try and collab with certain people and they have literally just not, not cared because of course we're all, you know, trying to do our own thing. Um, so I wouldn't go out of my way to try and contact people. I always let people get in contact with me and that isn't um, a snobbery like, oh, I'm not going to talk to you thing. It's a, I don't necessarily want to waste other people's time and I don't want to waste my time chasing people down that don't necessarily want to talk to me. <laughs> so yeah, Cotton Dave shout out on instagram have you still got the audi yes um it is going to make its way you're going to see in uh, maybe a video before a video um that's coming up um the car last drive all that sort of stuff and then it will make its way to have a car company where it will just get 
um, the general looking over, just make sure I'm, you know, for me personally, yes, everything's on the internet, so I don't want to sell someone something that's damaged or whatever or needs loads of work, but we will go through the motions and make sure everything is right for that car with professionals who are having car companies. So we're going over to them um, in the not so distant future. Callum Hargreaves, shout out. If you choose, if you could choose a German car under 5K that was an estate, what would it be? I don't think there's really anything that comes close to a German estate. No, no I just don't think you, you really could. I think if you're gonna have an estate car and it's diesel, it needs to be German because they are the best cost effective. They run for the most amount of time, the least amount of problems. You get the most bang for your buck at five grand as well. I'm gonna probably say I wouldn't. Like I just I just genuinely go buy either a Mercedes, an Audi or a BMW product. Um, or you know various others um, but yeah leave a comment below let me know what would you buy Sid Roberts 2020 are you ever going to get a 2ZZ GET Sport unfortunately not um, my love for Toyotas and stuff is mainly in Aristos Chasers Supras do like some of the others the, the new GR or whatever it is that's cool um, but yeah, probably not, no. JB Fabrications, shout out on Instagram. Would you ever sell the S1 to buy a Cosworth? Um, already sort of spoke about this, so no and yes at the same time. I would like to own a three-door Sierra at some point, not an RS500, um, so that car would go to exchange one of those. Um, other than that, probably not. I don't really, I like Escort Cosworths, but I think there are a lot of money, there's a big price difference between a Series 1 and an Escort Cosworth. Um, and I don't think I like them enough, if I'm honest, to, to spend like 50, 60 grand on one. It's a lot of money. And I ain't got 50, 60 grand to spend either, so. Uh, JP Big Ears, shout out, micro on the channel would you redo um a car so yeah i'm always looking to redo cars if you've done something crazy with it and he has um done many things to his car and the camber's like that on the back of it so that'd be a funny video uh mr dot pinky dot 81 what car has surprised you the most when you drove it um i think the classic stuff always surprised me csl m3 yeah the, the csl m3 although you think it's good if you put yourself in a situation where you realize what that car is about uh yeah unbelievable unbelievable car so that would be the one slice of lemon cake on instagram shout out goals for next year gym youtube cars yourself um lots of stuff happening in my personal life so i'll be uh, parading that i suppose around um on social media so again uh, follow me on social media jamie fyd um the gym i would like to just slender down i uh, next year is going to be a funny one because of things that are happening in my personal life so i won't be able to uh go crazy trying to bodybuild or powerlift or, or anything like that um so i'm probably just going to cut back down just try and control calories and stuff um just get quick workouts in rather than spending like two hours in the gym every day cars want to replace the rs3 want to buy maybe buy another car but probably not um just achieve the three cars that we have, the Series 1, the 106, and the Cadillac, running, driving, and really nice examples of themselves, that would be the goal in 2021. I don't really necessarily want to buy another car. Um, the Audi will go, I think, for something that's dailyable, that can just chuck loads of stuff in, um, that's nice for me and my family to drive around in, that's safe, reliable, you know, economical, whatever, so it won't be like, oh, look at this, I bought this. Um, it will be a parts hauler for other cars, so that's the plan. PSST0507, shout out, on Instagram. I've got 6K budget and I'm down to two choices, a Mark II ST220 or an EP3 Type R. I think you get a really nice EP3 Type R for that money. You could probably stretch to something else with a 6K budget. But again, leave a comment below if you, you know, what else would you buy for 6K at the end of the day? I would go Type R. I think they're, uh, they're not a better car, but like, I prefer a Type R. That's just me. If you had to choose a car to keep forever, what would it be? Jim1999955 on Instagram, shout out. The Cadillac's never going anywhere. Unless everything goes wrong and I have to sell everything which I did last time, that's the only reason it sold. Jane Cooney, 95. What builds are thinking next and plans for 2021? So yeah, already sort of answered it. All three cars that I own at the moment, bar the Audi, will get you know various things done to them. That's the plan. I don't think I want to buy anything but an E30 2.5 manual coupe BMW. 
other than that I'm not really I'm not really interested in buying a car for content if that makes any sense that's the only other car I actually want in my garage at the moment Josh Mason 03 shout out what's your opinion on a Fiesta 1 that your EcoBoost is the first car again do your insurance um, just double check insurance make sure you are in the right realm uh, for owning that car and pricing and stuff. They're cheap to run, uh, relatively cheap to tax, it's like 30 quid. Um, so yeah, your insurance is gonna be the biggest uh, outgoing there. So yeah, just do your research on insurance, but fantastic little car, I could do a lot to them. Hey, Hain dot Satan, Stain, O2, something like that. Shout out. Uh, why are Monday ST200s and ST220 so underrated? So I've driven a few of these and I understand why they're underrated. I do get it. Um, Mondeo purists out there will always buy a Mondeo. I would challenge that with a Lexus GS300 because they're still a three litre, big, luxurious, you know, thing. Um, but then a GS300 is really underrated. So I just don't think it's necessarily those cars physically are underrated i think it's that whole genre of car that is underrated um the in the middle big saloon with a big engine um there's not a lot of people out there that would just go for that and either want a hot hatch or they want to get an suv if they want something bigger or an mpv or whatever you're going to buy um so i think that's sort of um whereas that's why you don't see too many hot versions of uh saloon cars these days i feel they're just not really what people want they're trying to do hot hatches and fast suvs now so all crossovers i know um rm smith not 295 Will you ever get a Mark 1 Focus RS? PS, hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having a good day too, mate. Now, for the Series 1, I looked at a Mark 1 Focus RS and I really, really wanted it, but I just, it was more of a financial gain in the sense that I was buying it because I know my money was safe. Yes, the money's safe in Series 1, don't get me wrong. Been very real with you guys, but I just don't think I wanted it as much as I want. I thought I, I, I would. That would be the only other thing I would be looking at if it wasn't for a Series 2 or a Series 1, that's what I would have probably gone for. But I looked at a fair few of them, people charging silly money for absolute bangers, which is a shame. So I'd rather buy a clapped out 80s or 90s car instead. The values are going crazy though, so if you're gonna buy one, do it. Civic underscore Sola <laughs> Don't wanna get demonetized, do we? Uh, what has Mrs. FYD bought you for your project car? Um, nothing yet. <laughs> I'm sure she'll buy something. She she loves it. When when she well obviously she was the first person that I told about um, the whole Cadillac situation. She was like, right, get on the next boat then. So having a person like that in your life that is literally forcing you to go and chase what you think is right um, is the biggest gift. There we go. Soppy, I know, right? <laughs> Stefan73 on Instagram channel. Why did you decide to do YouTube? So when this all started, it was a sort of avenue for FYD as an advertising avenue. Plus at the time, no one was really doing real cars. Um, it was all supercars down Sloan Street. And that's cool. Or it was really high production um, car reviews about MPG and stuff. And I appreciate all of that. But there was no in the middle where people were just going, hello, I've bought this absolute, you know, not the nicest version of this car. It's cheap why is it cheap and why would you own it and that was sort of like cars that i could get my hands on really really easily no one was doing content on at the time you know we're talking five six years ago now you know everybody's doing you know these sort of things now um i still feel there is a huge gap in the market for just the reality based cars we're not talking like 100 grand cars with a thousand horsepower we're talking like normal cars with normal engines with normal price tags with normal budgets so I do try and do a lot of that, but obviously I'm on the Isle of Wight, so you know, it's really hard to get content sometimes. So James Crossington's, what's the next car you're thinking of ticking off the list and what's the first to go? The Audi is the next one to go, as many people may or may not know. Uh, the Audi RS3 is going up for sale because that car was bought with the intention of selling it in December in 2020. Um, that's literally why and was scheduled to buy and sell at that point. So that's cool. Don't mind being very pr transparent about that because some people may or may not know that's how it sort of works. For me, the next one to tick off the list, I'm really not sure because I don't think there's many. I want a really, really nice Taily driver, like a big, comfy, maybe an SUV 4x4 or a big luxury sedan sort of thing. Um, other than that, 
E30 Beamer, like I've already said, that's probably about it at the moment. What happened to your black Saxo you used to have on the channel? Uh, originally bought that for, what, two, 300 pounds? In hindsight, which I kept it, but I did load of stuff to it. The MOT came up and the, so where the seat belt down here um, attached to the car, it was rusted around it. And I got a quote for about, I think it was, for all the rust repair on the car, I think it was 1,300 quid at the time. And I, just, I literally couldn't afford it. So I was just like, well, I'm gonna have to sell it because YouTube ain't paying me that much. I can't physically get that money from anywhere else. Um, plus, if I'm gonna do that, which you guys know, I would just buy a 106 GTI, which, full circle, we have now welded up a 106 GTI. But, because I like the car, not because I'm trying to do it for content. How do you think the car scene is going in the future? Dub Richard, shout out. Um, it's a funny time. I'm really not sure, so I'm not really, I'm not really sure how to comment on it all. Um, I think it's just going to be really internet-based. Uh, car shows, like my, uh, like my RS3, I built it for the car shows in 2020 that didn't exist. So that's sort of where we're going with it. Hopefully people don't fall out of love with cars because there's no car shows, because you should be doing it for yourself anyway, regardless of how your car looks. Um, but yeah, I just think it's gonna be more internet based, unfortunately. Hopefully things clear up and we can go and have a car show and I'll try and bring all my sheds to it. That'd be nice. Um, Joe54 underscore HAC channel. What has been your highlight of the year and what would you have done? differently um i think i'd have traveled more if i could that would be what i definitely different differently done um if i could i would have traveled to a lot more places um as i won't be doing too much traveling in 2021 and the highlight of the year again just being able to do this uh driving that mustang that not a lot of people watch black gold um hertz rent a race car that was that was mad proper, proper mad so tom pa20 on Instagram shout out. You've got 1,500 to two grand, a fun but reliable daily. What do you buy? I want to be so old and say either a Mark V Golf TDI, GT TDI you might get for that money. Um, some sort of A3 diesel, some sort of German diesel if you want it to be reliable and like cheap to run. If not, Lexus GS400. But you're talking to someone that literally will always buy a Lexus GS400 if that's how much we're buying cars for. Because I literally, I revert back to type, if you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> When's the tattoo, tattoo tour happening? Be cool to know story behind all of the tattoos. Yeah, that would be quite cool. I did do one years ago when I like nearly broke my leg. Um, so yeah, I might do another one of that. Again, leave a comment below, let me know if you would like to see that. Oh, sorry, Matt. LV, shout out. Um, M99BVN, I've seen your review on the i30N performance, but would you recommend one as a daily? 100%. I was so impressed with that car because I wanted to drive it for a while, but I wanted to get one that was not necessarily brand new. I wanted an older one that was modified. That one was modified. I can't believe how comfy the seats are. And I do get, if you cover the, the Hyundai logo up, a lot of people would buy it more. Um, but yeah. Fantastic car, and if you, I'm not saying Hyundai is a bad make because it's not, but if you can get to grips with it not being a Golf GTI or uh, you know S3 or whatever its competitor would be, definitely go and get one. They're fantastic cars. Uh, why do you think the market for 90s cars has shot up loads in the past year? Um, so the 25 year America cars going over him, uh, you know, that's that's really what it's down to. Also, I think people really realized how many of these cars aren't about anymore. So to try and find a nice one does always push prices up. So just like the Cosworth thing, I think people that have bought one new uh, back then had one. Now they've grown up a little bit um, or they're a little bit older and they've got a little bit more money and they can spend out. They don't mind spending 30 grand to 50, 60 on a Cosworth, 30 on a Supra or whatever. So, um, yeah, I think that's why, I really do. That's why Renault 5s have gone up, that's why Peugeot 205s have gone up. Um, and again, they're far and few between. I think, you know, especially the JDM stuff, it's always gonna be hard to get the one you actually want. I would personally like a twin turbo manual white factory with confetti seats in it, Supra, but you just said 35 grand out before you've even got it in the country. Um, low mileage, nice one. So, yeah, I believe that's sort of the, the way it is. America is pretty much the biggest part of that though. 
So again, if you're looking to buy a Japanese car, do it as quickly as possible because they're gonna be so expensive in a minute, you are gonna be priced out very quickly. Is the Caddy on Air? Asks Borat Black VW Bora. Yes, um, it's still on the original Air Ride um, that was on the car. It's not the original Air Ride from the factory, it's the Firestone um, big bellow kit that was put on it by the owner that I bought it off of that bought it into the country. So that is still on the car. Um, again, because none of the electrics worked, I've just added it up and left it. Um, we will delve into that and really just replace it all and make it all nice very, very soon, hopefully. But yeah, it's still on there and it still drops on the ground and stick. So, jdcs.carcollections won an R34 GTR for the channel, 100%. Um, to drive, yes, to buy, 100%. Again, priced myself out straight away, but it would be sick, wouldn't it? C4 underscore LLUM Dream Car Cadillac. I know, right? A bit sad. Achievable, though. Very, very achievable. Um, other than that, I'd say a Gallardo of some sort was always the poster car from my generation. So that would be the ultimate uh, supercar, goal, dream car thing. Other than that, um, Delta Integrale would probably be the other one. That would be about it, I think. Because I, I schedule dream cars in my head as like one supercar, one car that's going to break all the time but looks really cool, sat in your garage and you know up and down so um yeah a gallardo would probably be up there or a four five eight no three five five three five five convertible ever going to own a mark 6 st now quick reminder i am 31 years old and i do have a family so i, I have no need for a mark 8 6 st unfortunately great car don't get me wrong but i like luxury cars i have always liked luxury cars big Lexuses, all that sort of stuff, Cadillacs and all that. So no, unfortunately not. I would not go for a Mark VI. Doesn't mean they're bad, it just means I wouldn't own one because I don't, I'm 30, I don't need one. Um, Dave Tommy 95 what brake horsepower is the series one? It's around 152, I'm gonna say. Uh, but again, we will get it on the rollers at some point, maybe in the next year, if everything actually opens up, that would be nice. Right, on to Facebook. You can follow me on Facebook or add me as a friend. That would be good. Let's have a look. So Andrew Russell asks, any New Year's resolutions? Um, to just be happy and continue to do what I do for a living. That's literally the resolution is to just, yes, build a bigger brand and bigger channel and all that, but just also keep it going because, you know, COVID has wiped out so many you know businesses and stuff the fact that i'm still able to do this for a living is fantastic so yeah just keep it going really more than anything neil fong asks where is the channel going to be in 21 you need to do a big budget build by yourself um unfortunately my channel isn't necessarily depicted around me you know doing stuff to cars um i love cars building them is the biggest nightmare and if you do it on the internet you are under constant um, scrutiny from random people and I don't find a lot of fun in that especially if I'm buying a car solely for content that's why I've gone through a few cars that I've thought were cool did it for content thought it was a bit in there and then sold it on that's why I own the cars I do now because I actually physically want them and like them and don't mind them sitting around and then me delving back into them um, so yeah a bit of a funny one that actually I don't think I want to buy any more cars just for content I want to buy them because I want them so yeah, um, Adam Melak, Melak, sorry for destroying everyone's names on here. Uh, will you be at any Ford shows this year, COVID permitting? Um, yeah, I'd like to get to some shows, but I'm not going to schedule any of them in because I don't believe that this is over. Unfortunately, I do think that it's just gonna continue to be like this in and out. So um, yeah, the car builds and the way I'm running my brand and the channel and stuff is really based around what I can do down here rather than me, you know, trying to get everywhere else. So. Yeah, a bit of a show, but if I can, you know I'm going to be there. Matt Hutton, what work does a Cadillac need to get back on the road? Um, so the engine's been rebuilt and it needs to be basically put back together and just tested by someone that knows what they're talking about. Um, but yeah, I'll delve into a bit more of that uh, when it comes to it. Gary Gray, will you ever remove the decal on the toe and eye cover? <laughs> so this is a sort of comment, so I just like... So this is the Series 1, and... You guys can just about see. On the tone I cover, it says Escort Turbo RS. I had a lot of people uh, 
really not happy about that sticker and I understand it's not from the factory. I think it looks really good so it's staying there. But yeah, <laughs> no, I won't be, unfortunately. Um, James Morris, shout out. Which is the best Focus RS? Good one to uh, finish this Q&A on. Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3. I would say the Mark 1 is fantastic for ex exclusivity because there's not too many people actually driving them around and enjoying them. So I'd say that one just edges over the Mark II, but more people would want the Mark II more because it is the ultimate version of the Focus RS, I feel. Um, the Mark III does nothing for me, unfortunately. I know there's people out there that own them and stuff, but it just, I've driven them and could have bought one instead of my RS3 and I didn't. Um, they just don't do a lot for me, unfortunately. Mark II, fantastic, I'll say. I don't know, the Mark I for like exclusivity, but the Mark II for actual drivability and enjoyment. So yeah, I, yeah, I don't know, Mark I, Mark II. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching guys, if you did like this video please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, I'll see you on the next one.